So this is on paleo seismology and volcanic environments. And this is um, mostly coming from the paleo seismology textbook. And really it's about these volcano extensional systems. Because in the volcano extensional systems, we see a lot of dikes being in place. And so they tend to, as the dikes come in, displace the ground or displace the earth and the subsurface driving a lot of extensional faulting in the area. And then I'll show a recent example from AFAR, and we'll end with a quick discussion about magnitude estimates. And it seems that the uh, you get pretty large amount of moment from the addition of the magma kind of enhances the deformation. So this just shows some different places where there's volcano extensional systems, so mostly rifting, but in some arcs you can have an extensional arc. So uh, so this just shows northern basin range in the U.S. This is uh, Sierra Nevada, so also basin range, but then Iceland, Hawaii, Afar, I'll show an example from here in a moment, New Zealand, so Taupo volcanic zone is uh, an important example of a, let me think, yeah, it's a intra-arc. It's the Taupo is above the arc, the Hikarangi trough, right? So it's an example of extension associated with more intermediate type volcanoes. So here's the, the situation is you have the volcano a lot of the time, but at depth will be these dikes. And the dikes are really the subsurface plumbing of all the volcanic systems, the dikes are very sensitive to the stress state. So they will like to grow parallel to the maximum horizontal compression and opening in the direction of minimum horizontal compression, because that's the easiest way to open. And they don't always make it to the surface. Sometimes they do and they see the fissure eruptions, but a lot of times above them, we just see lots of scarps, normal fault scarps. And this just shows because you guys are all experts of Coulomb, this shows the kind of tensile stress is above the tip of a dike, and this shows a little bit the displacement field as a dike would come to the surface without faulting, but if there's faulting, it would relax these stress. So a good example that's been studied a lot by the team at Leeds, in the University of Leeds in the UK, is this Dabaho uh, volcanic crisis in the AFAR of Ethiopia. And I won't show it here, but they did a lot of INSAR around these places, and they found that there was a huge dike that's in place, but also there were some point sources of magma pressure, like shallow magma chambers as well. So it's kind of a complex subsurface magma geometry. But here's what it did at the surface. You see this really beautiful cracking. And so you can imagine it as the same kind of relief that then will be buried and we could do paleo seismology on these dike intrusion events. Here's another example. So basically the the dike is down underneath here and it's erupting, it's getting close to the surface and it's feeding uh, the magma as it gets close to the surface, it's degassing and so erupting kind of a fissure uh, along here and then the fissure uh, persists. So this is the tephra around the, the open crack. And then here's an example of a, basically a vertical fault. Uh, so very high angle, probably still normal, but almost vertical. And you see the white shows the, what happened in the last most recent motion. So there was the subsurface kind of carbonate coating. And then this was the scarf that was there before from maybe a prior event so but you see this guy's like almost two meter high person so almost three meters of vertical and one thing that as i said is the role of the the dikes is to push really hard and so sometimes we get exaggerated offsets due to the magma pressure so if it's just an earthquake we wouldn't maybe see quite as much motion but when the magma is there it's just pushing and it drives the ground apart and it makes these large. So you can imagine doing paleo seismology of fissures. So here's a hole that opens and it's then filled with sediment, a couple different geometries, and then also kind of a scarp fill. So you could imagine sand accumulating and then these blocks there. So basic paleo seismology of this event.
So they show various magnitudes of, of these, um, the, the earthquakes associated with these dike intrusion um, and the depth. So usually they're pretty shallow, but not always. And then here's the magnitude. So these are earthquakes. And so you see really big magnitudes associated with the dike. So my point is dikes really help drive the earthquake because this pressure is so great. And um, here's the calderas and central volcanoes. So this could be what you might expect for the arcs. You can still get pretty big earthquakes associated with the magmatic systems. Even like in here at like Merapi, isn't it pretty seismically active at times? There's some arrow that earthquakes, right? So those are deep, but and and maybe not that large, but occasionally you could have one dike come near to the surface and really drive some important shaking.